Where did the coronavirus begin? Anywhere but China, according to the Chinese Communist Party. What outrageous plans are they making now? Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect yourself whenever you go online. Well, gang, happy anniversary. It's been almost a year since the first reports of the coronavirus, or as I call it, the CCP virus. The CCP virus changed our lives forever. How are you celebrating? I'm hoarding toilet paper again. Never know when the next lockdown might be. But the Chinese Communist Party is celebrating the CCP virus anniversary in the only way they know how, by blaming everyone else. You see, over the past year, the Communist Party has been trying to muddy the waters as to where the coronavirus outbreak actually began. And they've had some help from the World Health Organization. Last month, the New York Times released internal World Health Organization documents. And it turns out they never investigated the origins of the virus. The documents show how the WHO leadership quietly negotiated terms with China that sidelined its own experts. They would not question China's initial response or even visit the live animal market in the city of Wuhan, where the outbreak seemed to have originated. And when Australia called for an international investigation into the origin of the outbreak, China launched a trade war against them. That is disgusting. How could Trump do that? Trump really is the best scapegoat. Remember, kids, if you forgot to do your homework, just tell your teacher that Trump ate your homework. It's the perfect excuse. So the point is, the Chinese Communist Party does not want the blame for the CCP virus, which is why the party is once again trying to raise doubts about the origin of it. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian is saying, although China was the first to report cases, it doesn't necessarily mean that the virus originated in China. Maybe the World Health Organization would have backed that up if only they had been allowed to investigate. Zhao Lijian, of course, famously tried to blame the U.S. military for the coronavirus back in March. Later in March, China also tried to blame Italy. They did that by twisting the words of Italian physician Giuseppe Ramuzzi. In an interview with NPR, the doctor said some other doctors in Italy had said they remember having seen very strange pneumonias in December and even in November. So Chinese state-run media made it sound like he meant that the virus was circulating in Italy before there was an outbreak in China. You know, secondhand hearsay is not exactly conclusive proof. Also, it doesn't mean it was the same virus, and even if it was, it also could have spread there from China, since three million people from China visit Italy every year. Ramuzzi himself says that Beijing twisted his words in a textbook example of propaganda, and that he thinks the virus definitely came from China, but spread to Italy earlier than previously thought. By the way, even the first officially confirmed case in Wuhan was traced back to November, although the Chinese Communist Party didn't exactly publicize that fact. That case isn't considered patient zero, though, so we don't know when the first case of the CCP virus was, or as the CCP called it at the time, the Wuhan virus. Yes, the Wuhan virus, because it came from Italy. So all that blaming Italy and the U.S. happened back in March. But now, as cases are spiking around the world, the Communist Party is once again playing the blame game. They're blaming the U.S. again. And Italy again. That's to be expected. But now, there's a new contender. India. So let's take a look at these new, very legitimate claims the CCP is making right after this short break. Welcome back. The CCP is saying the CCP virus totally didn't start in China. 
So what excuses do they have for blaming America this time? Well, a new CDC study found blood samples in the U.S. from December that had antibodies to the CCP virus. That means it got to the U.S. weeks earlier than previously thought. This discovery adds to evidence that the virus was quietly spreading around the world before health officials and the public were aware. Which, my favorite Chinese statement media, the Global Times, takes to mean the virus was in the U.S. before Wuhan. It says, China does not seek to alter the virus origin story, as some Western media claimed. It is a fact that China may have been the whistleblower of the pandemic. Yes, China was a whistleblower, just like Li Wenliang, the whistleblowing doctor from Wuhan. Chinese police arrested him for whistleblowing, and then he died from the virus. And the CCP is a whistleblower just like him. What I take from this is, we should arrest the CCP. As for Italy, Chinese state-run media are citing another expert to say the CCP virus didn't begin in Wuhan. This time it's a German expert, so much better. He said, the novel coronavirus rampant around the world is not from the central Chinese city of Wuhan, but a mutation from northern Italy. Except, just like with the other doctor in March, they twisted his words. After the story broke, he tweeted, Chinese media are using the emergence of the G variant in Italy for propaganda. The coronavirus pandemic originated in China, and the outbreak was possibly even concealed at the beginning. As for the claims the CCP virus began in India, that comes from a team from China's top science institution, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Very trustworthy. The paper, which has not been peer-reviewed yet, rules out Wuhan as a site of origin of the coronavirus, but nominates Bangladesh, the U.S., Greece, Australia, India, Italy, Czech Republic, Russia, and Serbia as potential countries. That's a lot of countries. Did they just close their eyes, spin a globe, and then point? You know, some people say China doesn't allow for differing opinions, but that's simply not true. There are people saying the coronavirus began in the U.S., Italy, India, so many different opinions. But it definitely didn't begin in China. That's the only opinion you're not allowed to have. Now, this propaganda to get people to believe that the CCP virus isn't the CCP virus may sound laughable. But there's a good reason that the Communist Party is doing this. And it's not just because they don't want to be blamed. You see, the CCP virus opened a lot of people's eyes to the true nature of the Chinese Communist Party. It was a PR crisis for the party. But with every crisis comes opportunity. Which is why the Communist Party used the coronavirus to wage a propaganda war. And to rehabilitate their image by deploying mask diplomacy. That kind of backfired. But that was eight months ago. Everyone has totally forgotten about that. What's important now is that China is winning the global economic recovery which is why you should invest in China. Plus, it's got a vaccine now. And you know what that means. It's time for vaccine diplomacy. The only fly in the ointment is people still remembering how the Chinese Communist Party spread the CCP virus around the world. So that's why Chinese state-run media have to say over and over again that it didn't come from China at all. If they say it enough times, maybe people will start to believe it. So really, what the Chinese Communist Party is saying is, Trump ate their homework. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. Whenever you go online, you should use a VPN like Surfshark to protect your identity. Because governments and your internet service provider may be watching you. But Big Brother surveillance isn't the only good reason to use a VPN. You can also use Surfshark to access websites that are only available in other countries. Let's say you want to watch a TV show about science. I'm talking, of course, about Rick and Morty. But you can't access Rick and Morty on Netflix in the US. So use Surfshark to switch your location to Mexico, log in again, and 
Wubba lubba dub dub, there it is. Anyway, if for some reason you don't want to watch Rick and Morty, there are a lot of other movies and TV shows that you can only watch if you're logged into Netflix in another country by using a VPN like Surfshark. Another cool feature is you can connect as many devices as you want with just one Surfshark account. So try it out with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And Surfshark has a special discount for China Uncensored fans. Go to Surfshark.com uncensored and use the code uncensored to get our special deal that includes four extra months for free. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.